Hello everybody, my name is Jukka Viitanen and I come from the company called Hub Concepts, which is operating here in Finland. Today I'm talking to you about uh, different kinds of profiling concepts and tools for developing the regional innovation hubs. And uh, one of my case studies that I'm going to present to you in detail today is Otaniemi, the number one innovation environment here in Finland. So, uh, hub concepts, what are we? Uh, we are a consulting company which is specializing in, in uh, working together with our clients who want to develop science and technology parks. We have a 20 year uh, experience in this field and we have uh, visited uh, hundreds of science and technology parks, incubation centers and, and many other locations in all of these countries that you can see in, in, in this uh, slide. Uh, what makes us a uh, little bit different to, to some other, other operators in this field is that uh, we have a very long-term hands-on uh, experience in this field. So we have been uh, ourselves in our company uh, planning and managing and, uh, and uh, developing further the existing science and technology parks, innovation centers and, uh, and different kinds of regional networks for, for expertise. Uh, but uh, it's not interesting only to, to talk about this kind of uh, basic uh, theories and, and ideas. Uh, a few years ago we started to realize that uh, quite many science and technology park developers and regional innovation hub developers have a real challenge in, in making sure that the environments are operating properly. And uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we can give you some information about these issues. And we developed our own frameworks and models and tested them globally to make sure that, uh, that uh, the global best practices can be transferred to, to our clients. We put this all into a book. So we published a book in 2011, uh, which basically explains the global best practice, how to manage innovation ecosystems and hubs. There are several case studies uh, from all innovation continents, USA, Europe and Asia. And uh, with this basic material, we can, we can approach uh, our client cases. So in this uh, following picture, uh, you have uh, the basic framework what we are using. In this picture, you can see that uh, on, the, on the left hand side, uh, there is uh, uh, this kind of a triangle shape which uh, basically is uh, telling uh, all the key ingredients that you need for developing this kind of a regional innovation hub. So if we check it from the bottom, the whole triangle is standing on national and regional innovation policy. So it is very important that uh, these kinds of uh, local innovation hubs are being developed uh, on a very firm uh, policy basis. Then the actual elements for each individual hub can be uh, recognized uh, uh, first from the bottom. We start, there is a physical infrastructure, all buildings, municipal infrastructures, uh, different kinds of facilities, and then of course services. Services for, for tenants, services for, for, for companies, services for international visitors, and so on and so on. Then we talk about education. Many times when these hubs are being developed, people are very much interested in university collaboration. But from our point of view, it is important to talk about whole education layer. Everything from basic education, international schools, university, researchers training, perhaps even lifelong learning. Then the following uh, element is uh, research and development activities. Uh, in our framework, this includes everything from public and private sector, so private R&D programs, university research and uh, even research in national research institutes. Then the next one is clusters. Uh, it is uh, very clear that uh, regional uh, prosperity is usually built around certain industries and uh, certain uh, critical mass of competence. And uh, very many times uh, it takes the form of clusters. Uh, for us, clusters is a quite broad concept. It can be anything from one industry cluster to regional cluster to national cluster or even a network of different kinds of clusters. Then following on, uh, living labs, 
test environments and different kinds of uh, co-creation environments. These are technical test beds or uh, then uh, kind of a everyday uh, environments where we can test our new products and services together with our clients. Following on, incubation environments. We all know that uh, it is uh, very important to provide uh, excellent professional services to new startups and even growing SMEs. And uh, incubation environments are needed uh, for these kinds of services. For us, incubation environments uh, can be, again, quite broadly defined in a sense uh, that it, they can include entrepreneurial training or uh, kind of um, uh, providing office space to companies or even go to the actual true acceleration of growth. And uh, in this sense, uh, incubation environments are in a key role in supporting the private businesses. Then the top of the pyramid, we have three different kinds of companies. Startups, growth SMEs, and big industry leading anchor companies. If we look at this, uh, this uh, triangle, it essentially uh, explains all the key ingredients that we need for the development of uh, a regional innovation hub. The lower part of the pyramid, it's public policy driven activities. So the idea is that uh, of course the policy and the infrastructures, education, many times even uh, the biggest parts of the, of the R&D in any given region is done and somehow directed by public sector. The top of the pyramid, uh, that's uh, in the hands of private sector, companies. Companies decide, of course, their own business, but they, they also direct uh, many times the, the overall uh, development of, of this uh, regional innovation hub. And then in the middle, there are different kinds of public-private partnerships where uh, these public uh, operators, cities, governments, regional governments uh, will work closely together with private sector. They come together and, uh, and uh, plan together different kinds of programs for clusters and test environments and incubation and support the private businesses in their endeavor to be successful. In many cases, uh, uh, we have uh, talked with our clients and, and business partners and uh, they have said that this is a very complicated picture. And from our point of view, we totally agree. It is complicated. But we have also asked many times, is there then something, one element in this picture that you can take out and then you can claim after that that your regional innovation hub is stronger than with that element? And uh, quite often we come to this conclusion that, uh, that uh, it is clear that all these elements are needed. And it is a difficult task to develop and manage and uh, in some sense orchestrate. As you can see on the, on the left most hand side, we use word orchestration. And with this word we mean that uh, we have to be able to somehow help different actors within this ecosystem to collaborate with each other, talk to each other, meet each other. And usually you need somebody, a dedicated uh, group of people, sometimes it's a company, sometimes it's some kind of a development agency, or a team of uh, qualified people who are then facilitating this communication within the triangle. Okay, so this is all about the basic ideas what we have. Then if you look at the right hand side of this picture, you can see a master plan uh, kind of a zoning picture of a regional innovation hub. Uh, from our point of view, uh, we believe that uh, urban planners and architects are very capable of building these master plans. They are very good in drawing them. But uh, the biggest challenge is that uh, many times when we are developing regional innovation systems, uh, the master plans and the basic triangle which is needed for the organization and orchestration of this innovation hub, they don't complement each other. They don't meet. They don't link somehow. And our company is specializing to work with our clients and with our partners uh, in the field of creating these concepts and models and to make sure that uh, the, the master plans and the activities within the innovation hub are actually matching and meeting each other. 
Well, uh, in our next slide, uh, we will show you that uh, this is not only theory. This is something that uh, we have been using in practice, and uh, we are working together with our clients uh, to make sure that, uh, that uh, they can get full benefit out of this framework. So what we are specializing, we are specializing in creating kind of a, uh, analysis or evaluation on uh, the given regional innovation hub. It may be uh, some local university campus area or a neighborhood that uh, you in your country see as the key innovation hub for your, let's say, capital city or regional major city or even some local community in uh, remote areas. And the idea is that uh, with our model we can walk to any scale of environment and create this kind of a visual ecosystem profile which is helping uh, you to understand uh, how far you have been developing or who you have been able to develop your environment in terms of, of kind of a comparison to global best practice. We are not saying that uh, you should go and try to copy something that they are doing in Silicon Valley or something that they are doing in Shanghai or even here in Helsinki. The main point is that, uh, that uh, when you are comparing your own development against uh, perhaps more advanced global uh, hubs, you can learn what you can do globally and what you can do locally with your given uh, system what you have there. Uh, it is important to realize that uh, our model can be used for very local development projects or regional or national development projects. But it can also apply to global uh, kind of approach how your country or how your region will, will go out from your own region and build networks and collaboration with other players around the world. So I'm going to very briefly talk to you about three cases what we, what we have done. And one of them is, is Otanemi Innovation Hub which is a uh, uh, number one environment for innovation activities here in Finland. It is uh, essentially a university campus area which is combined to kind of like a company headquarters valley or alley uh, which are co-located uh, almost at the same, same place. And uh, together with this university campus area and these companies uh, they can create uh, very interesting uh, innovation outcomes. Uh, but this is essentially uh, an example about uh, development of university campus area together with the city and with the companies so that uh, you can create a good science and technology park environment and uh, make the innovation activities to start. In our second case, we jump to Thailand. In this case, uh, our client uh, was uh, Amata Corporation which is the biggest company in, in Thailand, and they are developing industrial estates. They have been developing industrial estates for the last 20, 25 years, and they are really good at it. They have two major estates, and over 600 companies are located uh, on their land. So there are over 600 companies who have set up their uh, factories and manufacturing facilities there. And 60% uh, of their clients come from Japan. And Japanese automotive industry has basically copied uh, the whole uh, automotive value chain on Amata's land in Thailand. Uh, they have a challenge now. Uh, as you perhaps know, uh, Thailand is, is a rapidly advancing country. And as a result, uh, the relative competitive advantage what they had for example with the cheap labor force uh, is, is gradually eroding and the idea is that, uh, that uh, since uh, they need to keep their clients uh, they have to make sure that uh, they can provide better services to their clients and they ask us to come there and work with them uh, with the plan how to upgrade the industrial estate uh, to more value-added high-tech platform 
where the clients can do more uh, local research and development and, uh, and design new things for Thailand and also Asian market. Then in our third case, we jump to South Korea, to the island of Jeju. There are our clients, uh, they are managing one of the six major national projects where they are building a healthcare town. There again, the idea is to build whole brand new town where the population will be somewhere about 20,000 people. And the topic and theme for the town is healthcare and wellness. The idea is that with our framework and models, we can help the developers of this city to make sure that this city is built for a purpose. The idea is that it is, uh, again, uh, relatively straightforward to make urban planning and uh, infrastructure planning and build the buildings. But it is as important as building all this and uh, having these major infrastructures there to make sure that the city is actually operating as a healthcare and wellness site. And with our models, we can help our clients to, to build up the necessary clusters, different kinds of development programs, and other mechanisms, how they can make sure that the city will operate in the way that it's supposed to be done. So to conclude this uh, little bit more kind of like an introduction and theoretical part on these issues, uh, we, we have testimonies from our clients that uh, with our frameworks, we can make sure that they are concrete benefits for our clients all throughout the development process of these regional innovation hubs. First of all, when all the key actors come together, they learn common terminology. We can, we can have all the decision makers to come together and uh, talk together about the critical development targets and find the good spots where to put their focus on. We can talk about uh, guidelines for joint development, which supports value-added cross-sectoral innovation process. And it, it promotes innovation activities in these hubs. And finally, it is clear that by developing uh, uh, these new environments with our models, uh, we can aim for concrete benefits. And these benefits need to be, for the city, it means tax revenues and new jobs. For universities, it means more research funding. And for local citizens, it means better services and improved conditions for everyday living. So I'm going to fi uh, finalize my presentation today by uh, giving you a very short introduction to case Otaniemi here in Finland. Uh, I already mentioned Otaniemi earlier as a number one innovation environment and a kind of a university campus area which is now in transition towards urban innovation hub. And what is happening here in Otaniemi? First, there's going to be major regional infrastructure development process. So the idea is that, uh, that uh, Otaniemi has not had metro or subway system before, and now it is going to be connected to uh, subway network here in the uh, Helsinki metropolitan area. And the idea is that there will be three new stations uh, located li right in the heart of this area. When this happens, it means that, uh, that uh, the old, very well-functioning university area and very, very well-functioning innovation hub will start to transfer itself itself from the science platform to sustainable neighborhood. Here in this picture you can see that uh, there have been a new development in the region. So the idea is that uh, all the red spots are new university buildings that are being built uh, to make sure that this uh, innovation hub will become stronger. But then all the uh, purple dots uh, are new residential areas that are being planned and uh, and uh, developed for the, for, the, for the future change, to change Otaniemi to become a neighborhood. So the idea is that uh, uh, within the next uh, 10 years, or perhaps even five years time, uh, the population of Otaniemi will increase uh, by about uh, 10 to 15,000 uh, people more. Then, 
our clients were asking us that since we have this kind of a plan, we will have this subway line, we will have all these new residential areas, and we will have uh, all the new uh, elements that are uh, making Otaniemi stronger. Is this enough? And we told them that, uh, that uh, you should do something more. It is not uh, enough that you are only thinking about, uh, again, uh, new buildings and new infrastructures. You should also think how people will change their behavior in Otaniemi. At the moment, uh, university campus area is like any other university campus area. Usually in the evenings, it gets quite silent because people leave for their homes. Uh, companies that are located in this region, people leave this area and travel to their homes. And uh, during the summertime, uh, when there are a little bit longer summer breaks, uh, the whole area is quite quiet. And the idea is that uh, people don't have a tradition to stay here and spend time, free time, here in Otaniemi. And now if we think that there's uh, going to be this development process where, where new residence, residential areas will be built to this site, we also have to think about the idea uh, how we can make sure that people actually meet each other and how we can make sure that this innovation hub keeps on growing and developing as an attractive environment for, for new innovation activities. And that's why we propose them uh, kind of an integration of, of new elements on the same campus site and uh, also make sure that, uh, that uh, different parts of uh, this uh, urban hub is being connected with walkable distances, walking streets, different kinds of places where people can meet. Uh, we are talking about uh, esplanades and boulevards which will make sure that uh, people have a kind of a uh, common sense and understanding uh, about the uh, atmosphere and visions for, for Otaniemi. Then, it's not only enough if you think about uh, where people are and how they access and what kind of buildings they are, but we have to also make and change this environment as an attractive living environment. And that's why we are very strongly promoting that uh, those decision makers and, uh, and city officials who are deciding about the development of Otaniemi, they would uh, put into place uh, different kinds of services and uh, attractive places where people can actually uh, enjoy their everyday life. And there the idea is that you should have movie theaters and swimming stadiums and different kinds of sports facilities there, galleries, ateliers, bookstores, uh, shopping malls and so on and so on, to make sure that, uh, that uh, the necessary service structure within Otaniemi is being taken care of and uh, people actually enjoy spending their time there and living there. And then finally, uh, it is important to make sure that, uh, that uh, people will have a chance and places to meet. It is a key idea that, uh, that we should somehow induce uh, meetings to make sure that uh, even wrong people meet each other every now and then. So the idea is that uh, we need lots of different kinds of meeting places and typically these places are uh, different kinds of restaurants and cafes and pubs and fine dining restaurants and so on. But also uh, we should plan this environment and uh, new buildings and new residential areas new subway stations and, and, and places where people meet so that they are, they are very open. Uh, people can work wherever they want, not only in their offices. Uh, they can work together with, uh, with uh, uh, their clients. They can work together, uh, private companies and university people, and they can meet the, the uh, city officials uh, whenever it is necessary. The idea is to make sure that, uh, that uh, Autonomy will be a lively uh, innovation hub uh, with uh, full of activities uh, every hour of the day, every day of the week. So this is our uh, basic idea, how we are uh, approaching uh, development of regional innovation hubs. The idea is that, uh, that uh, we recognize and understand that it is uh, sometimes uh, quite a major challenge uh, to start these processes, but, uh, but it is important to make an effort to try to guide the development process, how these hubs are being developed. So with our models, 
we can make sure that uh, that uh, our clients uh, can make sure that uh, their environments are being the number ones in their own local communities, own regions, and have reach to the to the world. Hub Concepts is your partner in profiling and managing the next generation innovation hubs. We are happy to to keep contact with you, and uh, we hope to be able to come and work with you in your countries. Thank you very much. And bye-bye.